Hi there, in this part we are going to discuss about stage 5 which is concerned with deploying, spotting and monitoring content when migrating to Power BI. The primary focus of this stage is going to deploy the new Power BI solutions to production. The output from this stage is a production solution ready for use by the business. When working with an agile method, it is acceptable to have some planned enhancements that will be delivered in a future iteration. Sport and monitoring are also important at this stage and on an ongoing basis. So we are going to use sport and monitoring throughout the process after deploying the Power BI reports. There are going to be five different steps when you have to deploy to Power BI. The very first would be deploy to test environment so that you can test your reports over there. Then you have to deploy into the production environment. After that, you have to decommission the legacy reports. That means your older system reports that you used to use because now you have been migrating to Power BI. After that, you have to monitor the solution. That means the new system of reports that you have migrated to Power BI. And lastly, you have to also set up the support solution. So let's discuss each of these steps one by one. The very first comes the deploy to test environment. For IT managed solutions or solutions that are critical to business productivity, there are generally a test environment where you are going to test or validate the reports that you have built. A test environment sits between development and production and it's not necessary for all Power BI solutions. A test workspace can serve as a stable location, separated from the development for user acceptance testing to occur before release to production. So I highly recommend that we should have three different workspaces, one for development purpose, another for testing purpose and lastly for the production purpose. Whenever you are going to deploy in the test workspace, there are certain key activities that takes place in a workspace. That can be your connection strings and parameters which we already discussed in the previous videos. Second would be workspace content that means publishing the data sets and report to the test workspace and create dashboards over there. Next would be the app. That means publishing an app using the content for the test workspace if it will form part of the UAT process. Usually app permissions are restricted to a smaller number of people involved with UAT. Then there would be data refresh where we can use the scheduled data refresh for any import data sets for the period when UAT is actively occurring. And last would be the security. That means you have to update or verify workspace roles. Testing workspace access includes a small number of people who are involved in UAT. So please always remember these key activities during a deployment to test workspace. And not only that, in the testing environment, you can conduct your user acceptance testing as well. Once verified, they provide their approval that new content is accurate, meets requirements and may be deployed for wider consumption by others. Next would be the deploy to production environment. Over here, first we have to conduct a stage deployment. Always remember that before moving to the final or the production environment, you should have one staging environment where you can test or validate your reports as they are already in the production environment. Staging environment is the environment which is just the mirror of your production environment. Or here, you have to handle additional components as well, such as gateway maintenance, gateway driver and connectors. If you need to create a new premium capacity, you can do it over here. Also, if you would like to set up the data flow or maybe data marks, etc., you can do over here. You can also register a new organizational visual over here or if there's some featured content, you can set up over there. Additionally, if there is any sensitivity label applicable for your organization for the privacy, you can apply over there. The next part would be to deploy to production workspace where you have to deploy your, all the contents from the testing workspace to the production workspace. Then you have to also communicate with the users. That means you have to either email them or you have to add them directly on the app and then make that app available for everyone throughout your organization. So whomsoever you are going to provide the permissions over there, they can see the app into their Power BI workspace and then they can start utilizing this. Last would be conducting a retrospective. This is very important. 
consider conducting a retrospective to examine what went well with the migration and what could be done better with the next migration. Over here, this is another important point. In many situations, the new solution will run in parallel to the legacy solution for a predetermined time. Because we are not going to decommission our legacy reporting system as soon as we have moved to the Power BI. Some of the advantages of running in parallel may include risk reduction, particularly if the reports are considered mission critical. Secondly, it's going to allow time for users to become familiar to the new Power BI solution. And lastly, it's going to allow for the information presented in Power BI to be cross-referenced to the legacy reports. Next would be decommissioning the legacy report. At this point, once you have migrated your all the reports to the production environment, the reports migrated to Power BI should be disabled in the legacy PI platform. Decommissioning legacy reports can occur when the predetermined time for running in parallel has been over and all users of the legacy system have access to the new Power BI solution and significant activities is no longer occur on the legacy report. Lastly, if there is no issues have occurred with the new Power BI solution that could impact your user productivity, you can consider that this is the time where you can decommission the legacy reporting system. Next comes the monitoring the solution. Events from the Power BI activity log can be used to understand usage pattern of the new solution that is your new Power BI reporting system. Analyzing the activity log can help determine whether actual use differs from the expectations. It can also validate that the solution is adequately supported. So over here, you can address certain questions after reviewing the activity log, such as how frequently is the content being viewed? Who's viewing the content? Is the content typically viewed through an app or a workspace? Are most users using a browser or mobile application, etc.? Please do check the links in the description section. And also you can visit our YouTube channel where you would find all the related information. Last part would be to spotting the solution. Although the migration is completed, the post-migration period is vital for addressing issues and handling any performance concerns. Over time, the migrated solution will likely undergo changes as business needs to be evolved. Power BI champions throughout the business units often informally act as first line of support. Although it's an informal role, it is a vital one that should be encouraged. Having a formal support process, that means if you have a formal team who can support the Power BI reports or your new reporting system, staffed by IT with support tickets, it is also essential for handling routine system-oriented requests and for escalation purposes. So you should have a system where the end user can contact with you or they can raise a ticket whenever they are facing any issue that can be related to performance or data so that they can reach out to you over there and you can help them as soon as possible. So please always work on this supporting solution because this is going to be the backbone of your new reporting system. What's next? Now it's your time to try yourself. Find the links to the PPTs and all the materials that I have used for this tutorial in the description section. Additionally, you will get many other links where you can go and you can learn many more things about Power BI, whether it's your Power BI administration, data modeling, or maybe setting up the role level security, etc. Everything is in the description. For training and consultation, please visit our website that is www.piconsultingpro.com. Over there, you would find all the training programs. And also, if you have any question, any concern, please don't forget to connect with us. That is connect at biconsultingpro.com. And if you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest Power BI updates and videos.